when we look at the ancient world, one thing that seemed to tower above every other mystery was the mystery of the Sphinx. The riddle of the Sphinx has been written into a, a lot of drama over the years. Uh, and so also in this modern time, we have this other riddle looming over our heads that's been sitting around for some time now. And that's you know called the riddle of Al in brief. It's a, an obscure prophecy. And we think it's been solved, this riddle. So to understand the solution is to see how it connects to the whole of the document itself in, in recurring or connecting other verses. Um, for the this riddle is the quintessential riddle that really makes this book magical. This book, Liber al Religious, the Book of the Law, was delivered by Iwas, 93 equals 418. When we look at the, the, the verse itself, the verse before it says, listen to the numbers and the words. And then there's this obscure set of letters and numbers. 4638-80K-2-4-A-L-G-M-O-R-3-Y-X-2489-R-P-S-T-O-B-A-L. And the Book of the Law really kind of nods us. What, what does this mean? Well, an acquaintance of mine some several years back now, John Farthing, uh, took a stab at it by uh, looking at the, second, uh, the 75th verse of chapter 2, listen to the numbers and the words. And he said, well, the Hebrew word for number is sephiroth. Uh, this suggests that the numbers of the puzzle relate to the sephiroth themselves, uh, as much as the numbers and words combined. And that ampersand uh, that it's written in, listen to the numbers and the words in ampersand, becomes significant, I think. I can get a little bit overly technical here, so I'm going to try not to. But the first four numbers, 4, 6, 3, 8, they happen to be uh, the sephiroth that represent significant stages in one's initiation. The eight being the first stage, the veil of Kesheth opens up. This is that veil into the deeper astral world uh, that is the depth of the human soul. It's easy to say. Uh, the next uh, number six is the veil of Parakath. That's the veil that makes one adept, one to communicate with his or her holy guardian angel. The four in that becomes the sephiroth uh, of the adeptus exemptus. This is um, Prospero breaking his magic wand at the end of Tempest, uh, Shakespeare's Tempest. This is saying the work is done. And one will then commit oneself to the abyss, where on the other side we will arrive in the city of the pyramids, the third uh, sephiroth. So we have, in the order I presented them, 8, 6, 4, and 3, as opposed to 4, 6, 3, 8. Now, if we take those numbers and we put them into their separate names, Kesed, Tifereth, Bina, and Hud, we come to a value of 415, letters spelled in full. Adding the next two letters in this strange passage of letters and numbers, the A and the B, that gives us another 3, we get to the first of four sets of 418. By way of trying to shorten this out, I'm going to say quite simply, uh, Crowley himself discovered that RPSTOVAL equals 418. And there are two other sets in between that um, John Farthing managed to come up with. So that he came to a total of four sets of 418. Uh, this uh, becomes... Uh, absolutely significant uh, because we get to a, a very important verse in Al, Al 151, which says, there are four gates to one palace. The floor of that palace is of silver and gold. Lapis lazuli and jasper are there in all rare scents. Jasmine and rose and the emblems of death. Let him enter in turn or at once the four gates. 
Let him stand on the floor of the palace. Will he not sink? Ah, ho, worry if thy servants sink. But there are means and means. Be goodly, therefore. Dress ye in fine apparel. Eat rich foods and drink sweet wines and wines to the foam. Also take your fill and will of love, as ye will, when, where, and with whom ye will, but always unto me. So we have the suggestion of the 418 as a palace. And indeed, the house 418. Uh, if we look at that number itself, and there be, that there be four sets of them, they together are multiplied to 1672, which reduces to 16 by 8 Baker, which is itself a trash rack of 61. Whereas Liberal says, nothing is a secret key to this law. And the Jews call it 61. I call it 880 and 418. Well, 4 times 4 equals 16. And again, that's the tower at 2. And the, ta the, the tower at 2 has a value of 80. And then, of course, 4 plus 4 is 8. So there's your 880 and 418. So we've now connected another verse in Libraal, two more verses in Libraal, brought them into these mysterious other two verses of Libraal. So what we have is an analysis of both the uh, Ain Sof Hour as 61 being 880 and 418. And we see overall that the answer was given right in the manuscript itself by Iwas. Iwas lists his name as delivering 93 equals 418. So 93, which we in Thelema call the number of the great work, 418 is the number of the great work. But we have this interesting formula. We have this idea of 93 over 93 written as a fraction. And that suggests that love under will. But we read in Liber Kef, verse 20, this is the path beyond life and death. It is also beyond love, but that ye know not, for ye know not love. And the reason that I say this is that Love is not, should, or should not be reduced to uh, what humanity thinks of love, because that fits only in our limited consciousness. Passionate love, a filial or filial love, um, these forms of love are human emotions. But love itself is the force of the universe. It makes the planets spin around suns, it makes universes spin, it makes the grass grow. It forces us to love one another, to propagate our own species, essentially. And it is just the nature of life. As a matter of fact, it is an all-compelling force. It is a scientific law. Will is simply that force that we each possess individually, cooperating in this large grand scheme. So the larger grand scheme of love, agape, 93, the bottom part of the fraction, is the support of the smaller part of love, will, which is our individual modus operandi as we go to flourish in our own lifetimes. So it is not the same love necessarily, although romantic love, filial love, uh, is a, a lesser part of it. Nuik says, invoke me under my stars. Love is the law, love under will. Nor let the fools mistake love, for there are love and love. There is the dove and there is the serpent. Choose ye well. He my prophet hath chosen, knowing the law of the fortress and the great mystery of the house of God. That house is that palace. Poor E.T. Okay, and again, the, the serpent and the dove is what seemingly you've got to choose from. But in reality, the serpent is the bestial nox, or the evolutionary life force that takes animal life and moves it forward. This which came really originally from molten rock. Okay? Whereas the dove is the light, the knock, the looks, or the life force that descends from above. So we have that which reaches up and that which reaches down. But these are all 
scientific force. In Library Rita, we read uh, in chapter 2, verse 11, For mine was the key word to the closed palace 418, and mine the reins of the chariot of the sphinxes, black and white. So, the holy books do corroborate this throughout. Uh, and they're all connected with each other. Each book describes another in so many ways. So, moving towards closing, I'll say today from, I'll recite from uh, a couple more verses from Alan. From chapter 2, verse 2. Come, all ye, and learn the secret that hath not yet been revealed. I am a complement of new my bride. I am not extended, and comps is the name of my house. Remember the house 418. Then saith the prophet and slave, and this is from Al, uh, chapter 1, verse 26. Then saith the prophet and slave of the beauteous one, Who am I, and what shall be the sign? So she answered him, bending down a lambent flame of blue, all touching, all penetrant, her lovely hands upon the black earth, and her lithe body arched for love, and her soft feet not hurting the little flowers. Thou knowest, and the sign shall be my ecstasy, the consciousness of the continuity of existence, the unfragmentary non-atomic fact of my universality. Write this in whiter words, but go forth on the non-atomic omnipresence of my body. The exploding star force. We are the stuff stars are made of. Every man and woman is a star. And in that, the riddle of Al is really the riddle of your life. What are you going to do next? What is your modus operandi? How are you going to establish yourself in the immortal world? By what acts and deeds do you proffer in the universal life? Thank you.